Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed today to be bringing God's truth to you. Praise God. Can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me in faith right now. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. God is awesome. See? He loves us so much. See, no matter what you experience in life, no matter what you see, no matter what you face, never forget that God is awesome. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter how deep a bad situation you are in. If you call on his name and believe him. Now, when you call on his name, see, people sometimes just think God's, God's name is power. So, you know, so, Jesus, and a miracle happens. Maybe, you know, mostly, maybe in a case of an emergency, you, you, your car is about to be hit, and you just say, Jesus. Now, now there have been many testimonies like that. Many many so the name works see so sometimes when when you find people that who start telling you that's not the real name you know his name is not jesus his name is the original name hey 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 we know who we're talking about praise god yes we know who we are calling so, I, I, I believe sometimes it's the desire, um, not the desire to believe God really. Because see, if your desire is to believe God, there will be a humility your heart will express. But some people just want to feel I'm better than every other person. I have more knowledge than every other person. So you just read somewhere that um, the, the Hebrew name of Jesus is Yeshua. And, and, and the next thing, I'm not even saying that's the, that's the name. You understand what I'm saying? I'm giving an example. So you just feel all these people in the Bible or using their Bible and calling Jesus, Jesus. They are not even right. They don't even know the real name of Jesus. Huh? Don't get involved with all those kinds of arguments. There is one who's alive. We know his name as Jesus. See, if the Hebrews call it another name. See, someone who does not speak English can call the name of Jesus the way they call it in his tribe. And the name will still carry power. <laughs> it's good. Yes. Someone lay hands on the sick. And he declares, you know, in 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 in, in Hausa, the, the, I think the, you know when he wants to say in the name of Jesus, say Ashikina Yesu. So someone lays hands and say Ashikina Yesu, and the person gets healed. See, do you now come and say, "Now nah, you didn't call the name of Jesus. you are a Pharisee. You are you are you know Jesus healing somebody on the Sabbath day, and 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 the governor comes and says, no no the 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 the." Um, the, the person in charge of the synagogue now came and said, hey, there are six days of the week. In those six days, you can come and get healed. Don't come get healed on the Sabbath day. Hey, the God who instituted the Sabbath, he, Jesus didn't heal that person. You know what I'm talking about? He didn't heal that person just by himself. The power of God was present to heal on the Sabbath day and people got healed and someone is getting angry for God. See how the minds of people work? Thank you, Holy Spirit. We were looking at Jeremiah chapter 9 last week. And we talked about God being a God of loving kindness. He loves to exercise loving kindness. He loves to exercise judgment. And then he loves to exercise righteousness in the earth 
and we touched on some very important things last week i just want us to look at that today and in jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 24 jeremiah chapter 9 sorry and verse 24 it says but let him who glories glory in this that he understands and knows me that i am the lord exercising loving kindness judgment and righteousness in the earth we've talked about loving kindness and i shared with you how god god listen he looks for every opportunity to exercise loving kindness you see hmm. I want to show you something. Huh. Ezekiel, I want to show you something. Talking about God, God, God of judgment. Now we, we've talked extensively about loving kindness and judgment. I want to marry these two with this scripture to show you something. Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 7. It says, So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them for me. Take note. You shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them for me. Now watch. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die. Now who's saying to the wicked man? God is saying to the wicked man. Now this is the God. I want you to follow this. Now remember we were talking about the wisdom of God's word, okay? I want you to follow this. Now this is the same God who his word does not return to him void, okay? So he says, when I say to a wicked man watch it says when i say to the wicked oh wicked man you shall surely die and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his ways that the wicked man shall die he said that wicked man shall die in his iniquity but his blood i will require at your and you know sometimes we are too quick to judge we are too quick to especially when you have been hurt so you are like oh god you better judge now you're praying and praying and, and god finally speaks to you and says oh what this person i've done to you is very bad i'm going to deal with that person and then you go to one corner and you're watching now God has spoken to you. I want to deal with that person. So you go to one corner, you're watching. And then a disaster happens to that person. Ah! God, do you know God told me? Do you know God told me that he's going to deal with that person? So the person dies. Okay? But there's another problem. His blood. God will require it from your hands. You that had God concerning that wicked person because you were praying. Oh God, come and judge. Oh God, come and judge. God said, he said, when I say to the wicked man, now when God gave you that word, what he expects of you is to run with that word and go warn that person. Sir, you've been acting wickedly. I don't know, but whatever wisdom, whatever wise way you can put it, <laughs> you know what I mean? But I think you need to repent about something because... I perceive God is not happy with some dealings you've been having. Maybe it's because of what you did to me, but I perceive, sir, you need to change your ways. God is not happy with you. Actually, he's commanded a sword over your life. Now, if that wicked man hears when you say, my friend, will you get out from here? Is it because, is it because I did something? You've done your job. If that wicked man does not repent, he will suffer, he will die in his wickedness. But then he will pay with his own blood. Are you listening to me? God will not require his blood from you. 
But if you by chance hear or perceive that the judgment of God is coming on that person and you keep quiet. Now here is where judgment is concerned. This is how God judges. That's why in Malachi, he says, look, the Lord whom you seek will come. But who will stand the day of his coming? Who's going to stand? Why? Because you that is thinking God is coming finally, you may have questions to answer. If God comes to demand the blood of that wicked man from your hands, what will you use to pay for? And you know what it is? It's blood for blood. So you don't know that Satan is setting you up for your own destruction by getting that person to hurt you so that you will begin to pray and wish evil for that person. You are the target. Yeah, you are the target. You know, the Lord said this to me years ago and, and I began to live by that principle. And I want you to listen to me very authentically. The Lord said to me, he says, never wish anybody dead. Number two, never rejoice when an evil person dies. And the Lord said to me, he said, wait, now this, this is what the Lord told me. Not necessarily that I must preach it to you, but I owe that the things I learned from him, I teach. Now it's left for you to believe that I am teaching the truth or you argue with your life, that's your business. So the Lord said to me, never rejoice at the death of a wicked man. Even though you were expecting or you, you wished, never rejoice. Because when you do that, this was the Lord, word of the Lord to me, when you do that, you are by yourself magnifying the spirit of death and the moment you magnify the spirit of death you bring yourself under his authority so it's just a matter of time he will come for you sometimes you are provoked to like oh god just kill this person just kill this person now god will not kill the person are you hearing what I'm saying? But you see, because you are praying, now the, we have the spirit of death who's just looking for how to just ravage. He wants to destroy, looking for what to destroy. So now you are rejoicing. Ah, that man that was trying me, that my boss that said I would never be promoted. Guess what? He, he slept yesterday and he did not wake up. My God, my God is a good God. Okay. Did you suspect that that guy may die? Yeah, I, I, I perceived it. In fact, let me tell you the truth. We, we had an all night. While we we're praying, God says, I have seen your tears. I will answer him. And see now, he's dead. You were supposed to go warn that person. You were supposed to go warn that person. And the moment you begin to rejoice, death looks back at you and say, ah, even you have believed in my past. So now he, 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 it succeeded in your enemy, in the one you call your enemy, and you were rejoicing. But hey, what you don't know I could be the Fradish Commander Fradida has. That same death, the day comes for you. The day comes for you. I want you to listen to me. God will not even stop the spirit of death from coming to you. God will not stop evil from coming to you. What God will do is to deliver you from death, to deliver you from evil. You understand what I'm talking about? Satan says, I'm going to and fro. I'm just going to and fro. And we know from scriptures that he's walking to and fro, looking for who he will devour. Question is when he comes to you, what protective shield is he going to find around you? Where do you dwell? David said, he that dwells in the secret place of the most that abides under the shadow of the Almighty. See, that 
place called the secret place of the Most High is a place that is ruled by God's truth and His word. So, so you wishing someone dead, you getting um, glad that someone is dead is wrong. This is why you find David when they got the news that Saul was dead. You think he was going to be excited because now, now think about the situation. This guy was after your life. If this guy has found, had found you, he would have killed you. He demonstrated that many times, threw a javelin at him. Even when Jonathan, his son, tries, tried to intervene, the father threw a javelin at him. Imagine a king taking his troop to go look for you. Kill you. And upon that, God had said to you that you are king. And not just that, this king that is there now, you know, you are aware that an evil spirit is troubling him. So you have a king who's been, who's ruling you by an evil spirit. Okay. And not that God had been silent. God have actually shown up and said, look, you are the king. So God said you are the king and then, you know, an evil spirit is ruling you guys now. So you're wondering, God, oh. Ah, of course, Paul must have been taking some terrible decisions as a, as, a, as, a, as a king. But they all have to bear that terrible decision. And then one day you hear, he went to a battle and he died there. You are supposed to be the beneficiary of that news. Wow, finally, God's word have come to pass. What did David do? He asked the guy, sorry, what did you say? How did he die? Oh, I, I saw him in the battle. He actually uh, was shot. And then he now said, I should use the sword and kill him so that the enemy will not take him. And then I, I brought out the sword. I used the sword and I killed him. I finished him. Thinking David will reward him. David said, you mean you were not afraid to stretch your hand against God's anointed? David killed the man. Told his men, clear him out. Your blood will be on your head, not on me. I'm not going to partake in your rejoicing. I'm not going to think myself a bit. That's why David was not even in a hurry to become king. He waited two more years. When, when Abner was handing over the throne to Isbosheth, David could have fought Abner they didn't why i'm not even go you know why god looked at him and said this is just a guy after my heart how many of you will be in such positions and say ah god is wise oh. his judgment just took place my hand was not inside hey praise god now truly of course david knew all that but you see his actions and you see, with God, it counts. Your actions count with God, especially where judgment is concerned. Your actions will always pull your legs out. God will never judge a man because of the intent of his heart. I've shared this thing many times. If a man is a wicked man, okay, no matter how much you know how wicked that man is, God is not going to judge the man because of your perceived wickedness. God will wait for him to carry out a wicked act. It is by that act he will be judged. See? So never, never get excited in, in the mis mishap or, or death of even a wicked person, even one that have been wicked towards you. Never get excited. You are setting a trap for yourself. In the day death will come for you, you will have no answer for it because you have already magnified, you have already partnered with it because I helped you kill somebody for your benefit. Oh yeah. So you believe I'm strong. So you came to hire me. You understand what I'm talking about? Never. Never. If you've done so before, you need to repent before the Lord. 
If you are there wishing somebody dead, you need to repent before the Lord. And if judgment decides that that person goes like that, don't rejoice. Weep. Mourn for that person. Lament for that person. And if the Lord have told you that he's going to destroy somebody, you have a duty on your hands. Go warn that person for the Lord. My time is up. Praise God. But I believe you're getting wisdom in these things that we're sharing. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.